Last month we've done some videos. Uh, we've been covering quite a bit of uh, emails that we've been receiving as far as questions. And uh, basically the goal is to explain exactly what Ming China is and what we do um, and how we do it. And uh, I want to make perfectly clear also that, you know, this is how we do our Wing Chun. How if you want to do Wing Chun, or you don't want to do Wing Chun, or you want to do it however way you want to, that's perfectly fine. fine you, know? you like vanilla? I'm not going to tell you to like chocolate instead. So it's as <laughs> simple as that. Alright? Um, first thing that everyone talks about Wing Chun is the stance. Alright? And uh, Ken's going to do the stance. Uh, two ways, forward and on the side view. And uh, I'm going to talk about it first. So, for a good, all four steps to open up the stance. Okay. And then do the side view. Okay. Now, what is the purpose of the stance? Okay. The stance is the Wing Chun or the Kung Fu Man's source of power. Without it, it's like Superman's son, Green Lantern's brain. It's everything to us. So just the fact that you may copy it and just go like this and open up the stance doesn't mean you actually are developing anything in Wing Chun. The whole purpose is to find your center and control your center with why you do the stance. So a lot of times you see people do Wing Chun and they open up their stance and they're, and they're like this. Or in some weird position as far as down. Everything you do in Wing Chun is natural. Okay? If it doesn't feel natural, if you feel some kind of, that's number one rule of If it doesn't feel natural, if you feel aches and pains with what you're doing, if it feels exhausting and somehow, it's, in my opinion, it's wrong. Okay? Everything should be led to the correct development of how you're going to actually apply it in a real fight situation. So, for example, if Ken does, if he's, let's say, stand sideways, he does Nichi Kim Ma. But it has a slight lean to it, okay? Just slight. You know, it, it looks like he's doing Michi Kim Ma, but even the slightest lean, and it comes all over right away, okay? Without the stance, you don't have anything. Now watch. Now, do it without the action shifting here. Now, go ahead. He's going to open up the stance again. Now, think of it as far as what does it mean to actually have the center? Think of the center as if from the ball of the foot to the heel, your weight is in that center. That means it's the most perfectly balanced state as far as where you can put, put your center in. So, right now, if you look at this hand, let's push, push against it. See how you can actually hold it when I press against his, press against his, uh, his chest like this? Now, notice, if, I, if, you, if you can see it, if I just move it back just a little, just a little, it looks like he still has his hands. If I just move it back a little, already he falls back. But, if he adjusts it, watch how he, he adjusts his weight down and into the center, Right there. Now you can actually hold force when I push against his chest. That's the whole point of having the stance. Without the stance, all the hand techniques is useless. In other words, he's in place, and then I do, let's say, a lot chop like this, okay? If he's leaning back just a little, and I do a lot chop like this, this will collapse automatically. If, if, let's say, if I, per se, I use muscle. But if he actually has the center, I do lot chop, he can actually hold the technique without actually using muscle. Without the stance, you're going to have to use muscle in order to do your techniques. And definitely the old rule of thumbs, who has never been there, usually wins. Okay? So that's basically uh, one of the most common questions with the stance. Another question we got regarding the stance is, in a, in a fight situation in do you actually stand like this in, in, in a stance position? And the answer is no. Everything you do with Munchang is for development. Okay? In other words, once you develop how to find the center or feel the center, you don't have to obviously open up the techniques and stuff like that and stand in, in your stance. In other words, if, if, if in the fight situation, just stand at you. Rather than fight, I'm going to stand at you. That's it. You don't have to be in any guard position or any, any kind of fighting position. Just stand at you and control your center. Okay? Controlling center in motion basically means what? Now, if I have my center, I can go forward, backwards, left, right, anywhere I want naturally. Without, uh, without uh, investing too much in one particular side. Okay, so that's exactly as far as what we want to do, as far as what we do with stance. It just, and remember, you have to go, don't memorize the stance. A lot of people just go here, and they're happy, and then they just do whatever from that. 
memorizing the stance will not help you. You have to actually feel how your center is. How do you feel the center? Besides actually having your teacher help you out, if you open up your stance one more time, can open up the stance one more time. Now, once he's in the center, if he, let's say it's five minutes from now, and all of a sudden he starts feeling something in his back, or he starts going like this and shaking his leg out and stuff like that, he doesn't have the center. If he stands in the stance and he has his center, five, ten, twenty minutes later, he can stand there comfortably with only minor adjustments from his, from his position. But if you see him go like this as far as uh, bringing his leg up and up, he does not have his center. Okay? Uh, hopefully that has some explanation to do with as far as how to do this stance. The second thing people have asked about is, I guess the majority of the question is, why does my punch my elbow hurt when you punch. Well, do you want to demonstrate? A side view. Yeah, let's do a side view. Okay. This is the most emails I get is why does my elbow hurt when I punch? So do the common punch like words are here and they snap it. Yeah, okay. Look at that motion. Okay. Okay. Now we'll, we'll break it down as far as motion. When he punches like this and he shoots forward, what happens? He's basically doing what? Popping his elbow every single time. So you see that common in, in most Wing Chun punches that they punch this way as far as this motion, as far as snapping it down like that. Think of a Wing Chun motion as a stab. If you think of it as being an extension of a punch, see how I'm extending my punch and not hammering it down? The difference is I don't hammer it down. If you feel yourself hammering it down and you feel the pop in the elbow, that's the number one reason why people are emailing me and saying they have a problem with the elbow. Think of it as a stretch. See how I'm stretching? See how my elbow is stretching up? We'll use that as an example. Look at the difference between he's going to pop it and the elbow goes up this way, okay? Up, goes up, final motion to pop it this way. Now, watch how he's going to do it this way, the correct way. When he pushes it, see how he's pushing it? Constantly going forward, okay? Constantly going forward and extending the punch. So if you're if you're doing this pop motion, that's basically why your your elbow is hurting right now. Uh, another thing people have asked me is with the punch, do you hold it perfectly vertical? Is it slightly turned? Does it put emphasis on the wrist? Um, a lot of people believe that you put the emphasis on the wrist, like you snap it this way, you snap the wrist. Just remember, if you snap the wrist, and it's because the idea is that you want to lose at least the power of the long three knuckles here. If you snap the wrist this way at the last second to generate that snapping motion, if you hit this target with your wrist hard and it's, it's better than this, more likely you'll break your wrist. Okay? You don't want to do that. Structurally, there's a reason that you hold your wrist at, at, at an angle. You can say like two, four angle right here. So there's this way with the wrist up, this way perfectly vertical, this way with, with a slight turn. Okay. So I said it explained already why you don't do it with the wrist like this. Because you basically hurt yourself and break it. The second way is why do I hold a vertical ver vertically straight? Because if you hold a vertical straight, the first point of contact is what? This will be here, your, 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 your middle level. You'll hit it perfectly here in middle level. What's the problem if you hit this point first? Well, you can try it for yourself. If you hit this point first with your middle level, if the wrist snap this way breaks it, the wrist snap this way will break the wrist also this that way. Now, at this angle of the three-quarter angle right here, notice, the, and the best way for you to do it is, 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 um, is to find out, is if you take your fist and you hold it perfectly vertical like this, and hold it down, and you hold it straight, the first thing you're going to touch will be that middle knuckle right here. If you turn your wrist at, a, at, a full angle, at an angle like this, Notice that the entire fist will make contact with the, with the target. All right. So if you want to support your, if you just support your weight this way vertically like this, and you won't be able to do it. But if you have that slight turn with the punch, notice that I can support my entire weight with it at this angle. And that's being that, that's a structural difference across holding the fist at that angle. Uh, anything else on that? No. Okay.